Welcome back everyone to another tutorial. In this one we're going to look at creating our own reusable dialogue. I got help a couple of months ago by Simon Lightfoot with this one so be sure to check him out on Twitter and follow him. If you like these kind of tutorials let me know by subscribing to the channel, liking the video and you can always support me on Patreon. I never want to stop learning and this is why I'm using Skillshare. Skillshare provides over 22,000 lessons in multiple different subjects. Right now I am taking the time to learn more on design and also social media as I have never been good with any of that. If Skillshare is something for you, consider using the link in the description to get 2 months of free use. When signing up you are prompted to pay and after 2 months, but if you don't want to do that you can also always use the concept of the subscription and not pay anything. So don't wait, try it out now, the link is in the description and let's get started. So let's just go ahead and create our dialog class. So before we construct the, the methods and everything inside this class, we're just going to construct a enum. The way we are going to use this dialog action or this enum is to when we press the OK button, for example, we will just return the enum of yes. And in the other case, we'll just uh, return the abort enum. So let's start by creating our static class. And this one will be a future and of type dialog action. And the reason why we're just using it as a static is so we can simply just call dialogs and then the uh, method. So dialogs.yesabort dialog. We're going to pass in three variables of the parameters, and that would be the context, the title, and the body. I will just format it like this because uh, as I've zoomed into the editor it will be quite hard to see. So what we first have to do also is to mark this function as a async function. So we can use the await keyword. So inside this we're going to do, uh, we're going to show a dialog. But when we show a dialog we're going to have the action of yes and no. And what we're going to do is await this dialog and then await for the return value from that dialog. So we construct a variable called action. And we're going to call our show dialog. So the show dialog takes a context. And the context is just a simple one or it's just the one we pass into the, the to the function. Uh, the next one will be uh, optional. So if you want to, you can set the bare dismissible to false or true. That's up to you. I will just set it to false. So the second thing is we're going to do is using the builder from this show dialog. And this is where we return the specific dialog we want to do. So we can create a custom one and use that as a, as a widget if we want to. But I will just use the normal standard alert dialog. This won't be that much of a styling guide. It's used, it will just be how you can actually reuse a dialog. So we have some properties of a alert dialog. We can actually set the shape for example. And I will just for personal preference set a uh, rounded corner for the dialog. So the next thing we're going to set is the, the actions property. And this takes a list of widgets and this will just be the two buttons for now. So we will have two flat buttons or one flat button and one raised actually. And we will do like that. So both of them requires a on pressed. And what we are going to do is actually, when we press this flat button, which will be the left one, uh, this will just say no or cancel, for example. And we're going to pop a value, and this is why we use the await keyword. Because we want to wait for the action they are going to take, and then we're going to pass a value inside here. 
and the pop for the abort or no will actually be the dialogue action. We will just set this to no, you can set this to whatever you want. So for the race button we will do pretty much the exact same thing. So I will just copy this. We're just going to set the abort to yes instead. And then set the text to yes. Actually what I like to do is put in the, the title and content between the shape and actions. So I will just do that so I can set the title which takes a widget and we will just pass in a text. And then as you see here, we are then going to use these two buttons. So if we press, for example, the no, we will abort and we will get up to here. We will have the action of abort. And then we're going to return that value from this function. So if we check here, we are going to wait. And when we get action, we're going to go to the bottom. And here we will return the value. So what I'm doing right now is just to uh, check if the action is not null. And if it's null, we'll just return abort. And why we're doing is, uh, is if, for example, we will set the barrier dismissible. Um, if we let the user, for example, press outside the dialog and it will be pressed, uh, the dialog action will actually not be returned to this final action. So this will just say that if it's null, then we will return the abort instead. Uh, like that. So what we can do now is actually go back to the home page. And just to demonstrate this a bit better, I will just create a variable here. Like that. So when we actually use the the dialog, we can then change this bool value. So what we can do now is call our function. So we call the dialogs class and then the yes and abort dialog. We'll pass in just some my title. like that so if we then hold our um, cursor over this function we can see that it returns a future of dialogue action which just means that this will take time or uh, we'll know that we'll get this in the future of the dialogue action so we can call this with an await keyword so let's set the function to a async And as we know that this returns a value, we can just set that to a value. So now we have this action. So right now I'll just test see to see if this works. We can see that when we press the button, it opens this dialog. So as we can see it here, it just doesn't uh, display the yes. And that's because we haven't set the, the color to white for this one. So there we go, there we have the white yes. So what we can do now is just simply do an if else statement, right? So what we can, let me just show this. So we just create our first if. So if it's tapped yes, we'll just change the bool to true. And if it's not, we'll just change it to false. So we can see that the value is false now. And if I press the button, I press yes. We can see that we have pressed the dialog action. So right now we have a reusable widget, which we can use to get an action if we press the yes or cancel, for example. And this makes everything a lot easier if you're using dialogs instead of reconstructing uh, another dialogue for each use case.
So if you like this kind of content, let me know by liking the video and also comment down below if you got stuck somewhere. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And if you want to, you can always check out Patreon. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.